looking for resolve in their games? You know, what what's, what what are they struggling with primarily? It's it's kind of hard to to judge entirely. I think definitely, obviously, the 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 sort of blunt and bland answer is they're just struggling to convert leads in the mid game, and I think maybe one of the symptoms is they're just kind of getting picked off right before or like one member is getting chunked out or caught out uh right before team fights start or they just don't necessarily get the correct kind of setup uh for these team fights and it just sets them up for failure uh when it comes to objectives that they start to play around because quite frankly they've had really good uh, early game objective control but it doesn't really matter if you fumble at the, at the soul dragon or you just start to lose fights around uh these neutrals and then you just get out scaled or whatever the the case has been out of these last three games yes. i i for me that's why i want to see resolves go for more of like a mid-range uh draft because i think from that like drafts that can flourish in the mid game tend to be relatively good early on as well and also i think it just makes it very easy for them to execute on the leads that they tend to get for themselves and uh, then they can maybe try and snowball a game a little bit more. I want to see like a rumble, for example, at a soft. I don't. Yeah. I don't know whether he'll pick it because it doesn't seem like a soft champion. But maybe I'm just that's, like. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know because <laughs> I know soft quite well, and he is normally very happy to learn new champions. But rumble just doesn't seem to have been on the on the cards for. <laughs> For, uh, the soft this time he played around, it in but... the first week, right? He played Olaf and Rumble and, in the yeah, first week. Yeah, no, he did play Rumble once. Yeah, so it's not like he's necessarily averse to it. Volley Bear is going to actually be the response this time. So straying away from that. And I would personally maybe like to see Leona just because, you know, just stack a little bit more engage on there. You, you, there's no real harm in doing it uh, in this case. And yes, it's not going to necessarily be with uh, with a Rumble, but it's still going to be pretty strong, but they're actually going to lock in a strong top side here with, with the Renekton blind. And I think, honestly, Renekton Volley Bear uh, playing for top side, or obviously it could end up in Chimera's hands, the Renekton, that's immediately a very strong lane to play towards. Yeah, and one of the things that really, I think, held uh, Resolve back versus Granite was that lack of engage, though. They didn't have that ability to just push the button and go. This is very interesting, interesting. from Dusty, though. The Sivir comes through. Um, I'm immediately starting to worry a little bit from Dusty's comp. Like, it, it's one of those things where you're kind of sitting back and waiting. You don't have as much proactivity. I mean, the Sivir ultimate obviously can be useful, but... Hmm, interesting one from Dusty. It's a lot of move speed. Got to go fast yeah, in this build. You group up, you uh, use your mo movement abilities, and you just front to back. That's what Dusty's aimed to do so far. We'll see how they round out their comp, because there's a lot of other champions that can kind of fit that archetype as well. I think top side, you really just want to go like a beefy front line. Yeah. Um, like straight up, if you pick anything that isn't like Scion or Dawn or whatever, these kind of, whatever you pick top side to be tanky, I think that's a mistake. You're running it, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, In reality, Leona. No, Leona, unfortunately, Jamada, mate. They weren't listening to you, and now it's banned. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, I don't think it's terrible that they went for the Renekton in, in that slot anyway. Uh, just to, you know, you've got a weak side bot uh, when you've got Ezreal most times out of 10, so securing a strong solo lane is always good. But this is effectively Resolve's draft from yesterday, except flipped, because they had the Karma Olaf uh, in place of the Udyr and the Sivir, mm -hmm. uh, which they took into Ezreal. So Dusty kind of taking a page out of their book uh, in that regard, and Resolve moving away was his victor after yesterday. <laughs> Uh, I think even though he was getting bullied in that game, Markun really just didn't like him. I don't know why. Uh, I think it makes a whole bunch of sense. But you could probably just see him default onto something like the Orianna in this case. Or it depends on whether they want to put the Karma Bot or hide the flex. So top lane, like you said, not necessarily strictly a frontliner, but, you know, Aatrox certainly can drain tank and, you know, stay pretty healthy throughout these fights. Depends as well how the early game goes with that lane phase because it's a pretty strong 2v2 Uday Aatrox. It's not exactly yeah. like massively weak. Yes, Volley Bear Renekton is strong as well, but there's definitely things that you can do on the side of Dusty up there in that top side. Personally, I, yeah, I would have tried to tank, but it's it's all good. It just depends how they place one out. Let's not pretend like Aatrox with, you know, that, Karma Shields that's, and yeah. that's oh, a lock in. Okay. I was, I was, I, I'm right. sorry to cut you. I was, I was trying to say no, go. That's, that's a plausible <laughs> lock in when you've got three mobile champions and an Aatrox who's got a really short dash. Right. Uh, Kamira, very, very well known for his Anivia. He's when he started out playing in the UKC in two years ago. Uh, this was a lock in that he he took quite frequently. Uh, and I don't actually think he's had a great success rate on it, but that's not the point. It's the threat of it being there. Uh, and it just it's it's a game warping champion because as soon as it hits six, all of a sudden middling tower just becomes that much harder to take down. Uh, and there's a lot of kill threat there. It, depending on who goes mid, there is a lot of uh, lot of threat. Uh, in terms of the burst that a Volibear and an Anivia can put down uh, on the mobile mage. 
It's also really hard for Dusty with things like if, if they're relying on like Karma shields and like Silver Ulti and yeah, like just I'm... running at you. If you've got the wall, you've got the the Glacial Storm from Nivea. Yeah. It really I... really makes things kind of difficult. My worry is though for Resolve, not a huge amount of consistent damage on this mm. on the side as far as the game goes on. Um, I think. Like there's potential for it to you be know, like maybe it's not exactly a low damage champion. I just mm. find like it's it can be hard to to make that happen on a consistent basis. Yeah, I mean to play devil's kind of advocate, I think they should be fine. <laughs> I think they've got I think they've got a strong like top side to play towards. They know Chimera is probably going to be safe in a Karma lane on the Nivea, and on the bottom side, it's Ezreal Rakan. It doesn't get much safer than that as a bot lane. Uh, so I think the game plan likely play through top, wait for Chimera and Archie to get the items uh, brought in. Uh, and then you can start playing around objectives. Chokes as well are going to be so dangerous with uh, Dusty to approach when you've got the Nivea in the game. I feel like if he's scaling up and this game does go later on, like the Nivea wall just makes it so hard for Dusty to yeah. do anything. And, the, and you know, you just throw the wall down and there's Nivea ultimate and Dusty had literally just got to run through it. And it's like, there, there isn't another way to get around that. It's just uh, either we have flashes or we don't. And if we don't, we've got to run. <laughs> and running through Nivea is quite hard to do. But I, I think, you know, I think... It, it's getting a Nivea to that point where that's relevant is the hardest yeah. part of that. But it's into a Karma lane, so it, you know you've you've got a you've got a relatively safe lane to do so. I, I'm I'm very interested. I haven't seen a Nivea in competitive for quite some time, so I know Camaro is well known for it. And this is where I'm starting to get a little hype for Resolve. This is where I'm saying, okay, Resolve, oh, you, can you can pick up a win here. You can pick up a win here. But anyway, for our third game, we haven't changed our casters. I'm probably not going to pretend like we have. Uh, it's just you know, Hippo and Ox. Who better to poach these eggs for Chimera? Just Hipprin and Orcs? Just Come Hipprin on, and Orcs. Come on, put some respect on the name. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, Nivea coming out for Chimera. Uh, like Joanna said, it, it, it's always been a pocket pick for him, but not one he's had competitive that much success on. But we know it's a pick he, he can play. I mean, he made his debut in the UK scene on this champion, actually. I mean, that was, I think, the last time I saw him play it well. Uh, that's a joke. I think he's actually played it. <laughs> I think he's had. I think he's had a few pretty good games on it, right? He's taking a hole here. He's had a couple I, I, of good yeah, games. Yeah, I know. I'm just I'm in the hole I, right now. I think though, this is the perfect time to pick it because by locking in the karma and a lot of these, not necessarily immobile but dashless champions, you know, all you're really working with is that tiny little little jump that Aatrox has. This is very much a composition where Dusty wants to group up together in the karma death ball with the seven movement speed. And that wall just completely shuts it down. And it's not just the wall, but the Glacial Storm as well. Very difficult for champions without mobility to navigate. And I feel like as the game goes on, they are going to have a lot of difficulties as the desk was talking about with even getting on top of this backline of Resolve. As long as Resolve are set up in a good spot, Dusty are going to be super reliant on flanks on the Aatrox to really make it work. So you're going to pick it any time. Now is the time. Uh, bot side start. Is going to be here for Sawyer. We can see Soft's doing the blue buff himself, so both of these junglers will be matching each other. Obviously, Udo typically a bit quicker on the old jungle clears than the uh, than the volley bear. And Entes actually did just get that ward, so a bit more bonus experience for him. We'll see how that really reflects in the lane. It's not enough to really change anything, unfortunately. Not really. It's not enough to like make us see get level to a minion sooner. And the thing is, as much as like they clear the wood out, the information's already been given. You know, you know exactly yeah. where Sawyer's starting. Uh, you've seen him. There is a ward on the other side on the Raptor camp, so you should be able to uh, spot stuff out a little bit later. But uh, yeah, actually, really like Karma on the current patch um, with the change to the ward stone. I've seen people who, you know, they'll go the full supportive build and then they pick up the ward stone. And if you have a Medjai's as well, you can actually end up with like 200, 300 AP on the back of that yeah. and just. It's so cheap. It's just such a cheap build. And the thing is, the new Wardstone kind of sucks for support because you have to be level 13. And as a support, that, it takes so long for that to happen. But as a mid laner, you're going to have level 13. It happens every game. There's very few games where you don't hit at least level 13 as a mid laner. So could potentially see that come out from Warzy. It's a pretty strong build in the mid lane. The problem is, again, you're entering Anivia. What? There's not much you can do in the 1v1 oh. uh, with that pressure. Blue hits the hook, but he might just pay the price here. He's ignited. Fast leg buys the space, and now Soft's coming in. Blue going to be the target of all of this love. Going low, and it's first blood picked up for Soft. A really nice bait from Fast leg there. Honestly, looks like it could have been a bit on the wire. And you see, Dusty were concerned about over chasing, but it didn't even matter. The ganking strength of the volley bear coming in with that point and click stun. 
Uh, and obviously the sort of long range slow he can also apply. So yeah, he's trying to look for some of the top side. But honestly, I think he's just using the priority he has uh, to, to secure that scuttle on the other side of the map. You will notice that Soft making that big detour to gank has put him pretty far behind in terms of farm. And you will yeah. expect uh, the Udia to overtake uh, the Volley Bear in terms of CS, but that's a big difference to have already. Kamara playing with fire there. Baloo's in the area. So was Sawyer. Caleb and Zombie just going for a bit of a scrap, but it's like you're saying, Soft now has to kind of finish up his camps. All of Sawyer's camps are now down, and while there's been a successful gank by Soft, Sawyer is now unlocked on the map to try and make these plays, and this is going to cost Kalen probably this entire wave. So it's just going to zone him off. But lose there as well. They literally rotated four members topside. And now Kalen trying to slice and dice away, dodging all of the CC. Oh, Actually, no. he might turn it around. Kalen! Beautiful lockdown, able to find the kill. Zombie jumps the wall. Baloo is flashless. Flash. The wall's going to catch him. Chimera will lock him in place, and that is going to be a freebie to Chimera. Resolve just popping off. What an absolute disaster. And honestly, beautifully played by Kalem there. Made the decision to back away from the tower initially. Great call because they probably would have just gone straight for the dive. He then waits for fast leg to come in range, dashes under the tower, and just watch this critical moment here. So, made the decision to back away. Good call because there's four members who are moving top. Warzy actually goes back to handle the mid wave. He knows he's now getting the back up from fast leg, but watch, he waits and stuns Sawyer here just as he grabs aggro from the Phoenix AoE. Fast Egg then follows up the knockup. It's a guaranteed kill. And this TP from Kamara is very late, but because Baloo has no flash, it actually ends up being worth it as he can just guarantee the kill onto the Nautilus. And as we saw from Warzy moving back to mid lane before, Kamara had already pushed that mid wave, so wasn't really bothered about missing any minions. It was really, really good reaction coming out from Resolve because that was a pretty heavy committal from Dusty in terms of numbers. Yeah, they really brought everybody over. Chu got a bunch of free time in the bot lane, and while he is down in farm, his team are going to be in a pretty good spot right now, and he's going to be able to catch up on most of that CS deficit here. It's just going to hold the wave in front of the tower. That could actually really set Dusty up for a pretty uncomfortable situation now. So it is a uh, Sivir, and Sivir does just kind of cut through waves fairly quickly, is what she does. Yeah, I mean, she's able to, to break the freeze quite easily. Um, especially with the support from the Nautilus. You can see Resolve have to take the slow pace. Kamara not wanting to overextend too far. And obviously when you do hit that level six point, can just essentially stonewall on that mid lane tower. I would like to see Dusty actually heavily prioritizing the Herald in this game and looking to use it mid lane. I know I've talked about yeah. this all day so far. Mid lane's a great tower to take the Herald because typically it's hard to take. You've heard it. But especially against the likes of an Anivia, it needs to be done. So. Big priority should be put towards that, and I expect to see it. Especially when top lane you have priority, mid lane you pretty consistently had priority as well. So I mean, Caitlyn having a little bit of a trade. So it is in the area. Riftel's not up on the map yet. We got a little bit until that spawns. We'll see whether or not we see any kind of lane swaps come out. As Camara now got that uh, glacial storm, so it's just able to kind of at this point perma shove waves, nice and safe. Get all that farm, and then just step away from the wave. Not really too much that Warzy's going to be able to do about that, unfortunately, for him. It'll be interesting to see what Chu decides to build here, because we have seen a couple of different builds showing up. Most people just go for the Divine Sundra first. It's, well, it's more the order ordering, of the build. Not really different builds. It's the order, yeah. I probably should have emphasized. We see different orders coming in. Uh, most people do optimize, well, decide to go for the Divine Sundra. It's, it seems to be a bigger spike initially. But the Man Immunate obviously does give you nice damage early, and it's quite a cheap item as well to finish up. So we'll see whether or not Chu decides to go for that. That's only based on the tier for the moment, so... Yeah, a little I, bit of a ways away. I, I prefer the Divine Sundra first, just to make that early impact. But, you know, I can see the merit. Uh, obviously, when you pick the Man Immune sooner, you are going to stack that tier quicker. Uh, and it can allow for a better two-item spike, which is obviously when Ezreal's really strong. Or at least uh, a faster spike from your Man Immune. Yeah. Oh, that's Ooh. the hook, actually. No, it's you. He's safe. He's got the shielding. But he's no mana, and there's a lot of pressure here. I think they can really just force him off the tower. You can see Sawyer, who just finished that dragon, is able to come in, and that is going to mean at least one plate going down, most likely, here, and a fair bit of farm missed by the Ezreal. That's good to see Things the pressure. Things are going down, though. They may just try and see if they can 
move the two members they've got in their top side over towards this uh, Rift Herald. Chimera's already shoved the wave in. He's going to rotate over. The so thing like is, they might go for it. I don't think you can move instantly because the problem is, you, so if you actually see the movement on the minimap, you can see how fast leg was actually walking with the shoe down. That's because there was potential concern that Dusty deny him even more farm. So it, they can't instantly swap because the wave is already like pushed in. And if they do swap now, they would be so far behind in tempo and Kalem would lose so much farm. It just wouldn't be worth it. So instead, yeah. I really like this decision. They use their top side just to claim the Herald because obviously you've seen the Soya leaning pressure bot and then a shoe just goes and answer the wave. So I think it's this is the best sort of layout rather than going for a full swap. And it's honestly, I remember when Herald initially came in the game, teams would swap like clockwork. Every single game you'd see a full swap. Since that time, we've seen a lot more development. There's teams who will just move their support up. There's teams who won't even swap at all. And they'll just use their pressure on the top side. And obviously, because they aren't forced to swap, they aren't really concerned. Uh, it's not like they have to, to wait as long to move their bot lane up. And the thing is, if you have priority on one side of the map, it obviously helps a lot. So I think good decisions going out from Resolve. They are able to get a Herald. And as I talked about before, if you're not getting Heralds for Dusty, that mid tower probably isn't going down anytime soon. Probably not. Where is going to be able to pick a plate up here as well? A bit more of a cash injection to him. And I think, again, you know, your, your point stands even if it's on the Anivia's team that has this Rift Herald. Probably quite nice to try and take that mid lane tower, at least chip it down. Camaro's going to be able to consistently shove in in the mid side. And if that tower's down, it means the waves have to get caught in a further back position, which then affords you a lot more space on the map to kind of place this, this more aggressive vision. So I actually would like to see Soth use that in the mid wave. I agree. I'm always a big advocate for Herald mid. Uh, we'll see. There is obviously arguments for funneling onto certain members and also there's scenarios where you can you can get more pressure by putting in the side lane, potentially taking a full tower. I think that's the thing. If you throw it mid, you get in two plates. If you put it in the side lane, there's a lot of scenarios where you can get a full tower. So it really depends how you think things like fair. And would you see soft coming in? Oh, I'll hold my thought a little bit. Yeah, they're gonna lock him down. Sawyer's coming in. Camara has the flash, does use it. It's the glacial storm just to slow Sawyer and Warzy down. That's the flash now burnt on the bird. Yeah, Camara did have the egg available, but was a little bit concerned about going down there. And it ends up just being in the flash to keep things safe. You see pressure being on the top side. I think they're looking to zone zombie off here. I don't like a herald usage though here. I think you just bring Dusty over. Potentially look for a fight. If Warzy face checks, he dies. Yeah, I mean, a single cube from Camaro will set them up for an easy kill there. Looks like they are holding off on that Rift Herald. Sawyer might find Camaro. Camaro overstepping a little bit here. Has that wall and it's going to get a bit of damage, but Blue comes in with a flash. Fast Egg's trying to come over in time. Maybe out of sight. They've got the egg for the moment. They've got the revive. And that's going to be the end of Sawyer. Camaro will be coming back to life as the storm is brought by Soft. And it's a double kill for the Volley Bear. Yeah, not a great target. In all honesty, if you commit to Kamara and he's just going to revive, it gives time for reinforcements to come. Beautiful roam up coming out from fast like there and has the quickness just to shut down any chance of them finding a kill. And bear in mind, when you look at the members involved in that skirmish, oh, oh. in a bit of a fight top. I didn't expect the Dominus to get popped. Caleb has to flash here. Get a little bit too over eager. Soft still in the area. Doesn't have that Stormbringer, so can't turn the tower off. Zombies should be all right, although Ultimate is now burnt. They lock him down momentarily. Soft's coming in to flash the mole and the finish. That's the fourth kill for the Volley Bear. 4-0 now. This Volley Bear looking scary. And it looks to throw the Herald down here. This should just be a tower taken. I think they possibly could have held it and got the last two. But I think just because they didn't have the wave there yet, it works out fine. And they're just going to be able to pick that up. So Soft doing a lot of work for Resolve in this game. And the thing is, yeah. this Volley Bear, this is a bit of a new build that's arisen. I don't know if you know this, Jake, but there's this item called Divine Sundra, and it's kind of <laughs> turbo broken. Uh, but Volley Bear with Divine Sundra has been shown up a bit in scrims, and you just one-shot people. But yeah, we're going to replay, and I think the big thing here is, this is an Udia, a Karma, and a Nautilus. You have about enough damage to kill someone, but you've not really got enough damage to kill them twice. And I think when you go in for a play like this, you want the more consistent damage from the likes of the Civ or the Aatrox, because... It's just lacking there. And then in this scenario, Kalem just take tower aggro, but has the heal and gets the stun down and soft can just flash over it to secure it. Now, during that replay, you just see Dusty just pick up the dragon uncontested, but realistically, I don't think Resolve really care. 
I think they're perfectly happy with this. Uh, we are looking at a Cloud Soul this game, so... Not overly the most useful for the side of Resolve. Fast Leg will like it. A bit more movement speed on the quickness, but, you know, you're not going to sneer your head at it either way. Dust, on the other hand, I actually probably quite like this Cloud Soul. you got the World Ender on Zombie. He uses that really well. Sawyer loves the global cooldown he'll get from it. And I mean, when you pop that on the hunt, it's just, yeah. yeah, it is actually a very zoomy team when you've got the Karma as well. I mean, Karma is one of those champions who can benefit from so well just because she's able to proc it so frequently because um, you're old such a short cooldown. And obviously it does have like an internal cooldown, but most champions that ults oh, are no. a lot longer cooldown than that. Oh, they went for it, but was he smelt all right and was able to peel away. You see Dusty answer with a turret bot, but I don't think Resolve are too concerned. They want this mid tower. Uh, it gives more of a window for Chimera to shove in and then go for a reset. And realistically, there hasn't been a scratch onto Resolve's mid tower. They've kept that well defended so far, and it's expectation when you have an interview. Yeah, and if Dusty aren't able to secure this next Rift Herald, realistically, they're either going to only get that tower with Baron or a kind of a good pick on like a rotation and catching Chimera off guard. I think that's the only way they can actually do it. So it's going to be a really hard one for Dusty to be able to take this tower. Now we have got that Rift Tail spawning up in about 30 seconds time. So maybe there'll be some action breaking out around there. Although I do feel at the moment Resolve are probably feeling pretty strong. Divine Sunderer almost finished up for a Chew. There is a Kraken Slayer finished up onto M Test. So has got that to work with and... Mythics are coming in across the board. The Divine Sunder has finished up on Sloth. The Stride Breaker on Kalim. It's only a Chew who's kind of the carry left to get his on the side of Resolve. You know, when I see like a Nivea 7 mid lane just one shot in the <laughs> I get this feeling this this might be a long game, Jake. In all honesty. I think Baron's going to be very important in this game. Yeah. The thing is, even like if you have enough wave clear, like if it's at an obscene level, even Baron sometimes isn't enough. Yeah, no. It, it, it's like it's doing, a Kraken by the way. Slayer Sivir as well. So we, we saw we saw a little bit of um of like the Gale Force Sivir. Um the last time we saw a Sivir. And obviously nice for the movement speed, nice for the extra mobility, but Kraken Slayer just once you start getting his ricochets off, you actually start to do some serious damage. I think as well it's the fact that you can like one of the cool things about Sivir where I actually love Sivir for this, is the fact that you can like auto W uh and instantly reset it. And it's so bursty. Like if you've stacked up, so your next like so your auto W procs Kraken Slayer, you can do so much burst damage. And especially later in the game when you have a high crit chance, just the fact that you can do two full damage auto attacks back to back is uh pretty hard to deal with. Obviously, the big thing in this game is range, you know? I look at Dusty, Karma's mid-range, Siv is mid-range, everyone else is melee. And that's why this Anivia pick's been so strong here. It's just so hard to get up without like a really strong engage potential and really they're kind of relying on Baloo for that on the Nautilus. I mean, we're going to see that Herald thrown down mid. That's just a tower gone uh, pretty quickly. Should be able to get a second charge though here as well, I would think. Unless Entest is able to get to the eye, but I don't think he's able to. Yeah, I don't think you walk up on the Anivia in this one, although, oh, okay, no, never mind. Smite comes Ricochet. in and Herald decided to like freak out a little bit, so... I'll get a second charge, but that's mid tower down. Obviously, you already got the top one, and that kind of leaves this bot tower. You can see Soft already sort of pathing down there. Could potentially look to attack this one quite easily, but Warzy will thin out the wave. Oh, they're jumping in. They've got the Dominus. They've got the lockdown. Warzy's in trouble. He'll be flashed onto, and that'll be the end of days for the Karma. Soft unstoppable. 5-0 and o on the Volley Bear. Now, Chu could be on the receiving end of a little bit of attention himself. Teleport's coming in. They smell that it's choosing trouble, and that's going to be enough to force Sawyer and Baloo away. So you need there was a ward there. That's why. Thank you, Observer. Yeah, wards. Missed that one. Wards are useful. Yeah, I mean, Kamara, really nice TP just to, to offer that defense. But concern here is he does need to get back to mid lane. He wants to defend the tower. Although Sawyer, doing a lot of damage here. Yeah, he's taking a lot. The true shot barrage is going to get dodged out, but he has to go over that glacial field. And fast leg will just catch him with the knock up, with the ignite, giving the kill over to the support. What a generous guy you are, Sawyer. Fast leg flashed for that. Not sure that was necessary, mate. I like the decision because I think ignite was about a timeout. And if you don't kill Sawyer there, you go on a big chase to finish him off. And Dragon has just spawned. So, like, you know, you flash in, you secure the kill, you don't have to go on a big chase, you move over to Dragon. 
and it should be pretty easy to pick up. So I respect the decision. Zombie could be dead here, actually. Fast and Soft are coming over. They got the yes, grand back. entrance. Zombie's going to pop the world ender. Able to just about get away. Gets a fair amount of sustain off as that's oh. so much damage onto end test. The Leandry's burn as well. Tick it off. Nivia isn't balanced. What a champion. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a lot of damage. Yeah. I mean, Nivia, if you connect, it chunks by all means. And I think, honestly, because there was that there was that period where Nivia was really strong because they kind of re like they buffed her quite significantly and then they got toned back, but she's still in a better situation. I think the big change was her ult cooldown. Because one of the problems with Nivia is like you get CC'd, your ult drops, and then there's like a lockout before you can reactivate it. But they did shorten that a fair bit. So a bit more versatile in the fights, but yeah, I mean it's the it's the E, the crossfire, whatever it's called. Like when they've already been either stunned or caught out by the ult. It just does so much damage. Frostbite. Frostbite. There you go. Look, 563 damage, right? Look at the items. <laughs> you can't tell me. Like, that's 186 AP. Like, look at the ratio on that. 120%. It's obscene. Honestly. Yeah, it, is, it is actually really nutty. And the thing is, like... if you're playing Sivir and you're, like, barely above melee range, oh, I mean, look at this. Oh, he's able to dodge out because of the spell shield. I think Chimera's going Horizon's Focus as well, so... That's going to empower Frostfire because you land the stun from the Q. Then the Frostfire is going to do even more. That's a one M-Test has to pop the ultimate to get away. It is not fun being a short range to carry in this game. I will say that much. Not at all. Like, there's so many problematic abilities coming out from Resolve. Um, but obviously, Sivir does scale, but uh, you kind of need to auto attack <laughs> to really reap the benefit of that scaling. Oh, well, they're going to jump Blue. in onto Baloo. The charm's going to connect a great... Ulti will keep everybody pinned in place and slowed down. Blue able to survive. There is a massive ulti by Soft. And Chimera gets himself the kill. Now they're going to get locked down. Zombie is burning low. Trying to find a kill onto Chimera. Does catch him with the chains. But that's going to be enough for Chimera to pop the stop. Watching Kalim slides into the middle of four. Gets a lockdown. Gets a lot of healing off. The Q's going to get popped. The chains will break. And here comes the egg resurrection. Chimera's egg has been poached. No, it's oh not. Lord. He's turning it around. Resolve. Walk away with that team fight. And they didn't even even have their AD carry. Yeah, well, <laughs> they fought a choke point. That's all they really need. Already had a pretty significant gold lead, but now 7,500 in favor of Resolve. And they're just going to head straight over the Baron. Really fast on this one, thanks to the Anivia. Don't even need the AD carry. A chew just on the side of the map farming. Picking up a blue buff. But uh, yeah, it's just so difficult for Dusty to function against his composition. In a choke point, they just cannot push through. The Anivia finding so much value here. I mean, you can see it here once again. It's just, it is perfect territory I mean, to fight yeah. on. Look at this ult. What are you supposed to do? M-Test can't walk through. It has to flash out. Soya manages to walk through, but loses so much of the health. And then the extra, the AD scaling, by the way, in Volibear's ult is insane. So doing a ton of damage. And then they want to push through to chase down these targets. But it, there's just so much threat from the Anivia. And they do actually manage to take down Kamara. Nice boom, boomerang blade come out from M-Test. But so much time was bought by the Renekton. Uh, Anivia respawns, throws down another Glacial Storm, and it's like, yeah, again, fight is over. You cannot push through it, especially with the wall there as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm a bit idiot, by the way, on Chimera's build. I kind of assume we're going to see Horizon's focus just because the empowerment on the cube actually opting away from that and has gone for uh, Zonja's Hourglass. So that's what that amp tone was for. Yeah, and the, opting uh, for a, an actual good build. So. Yeah, and the Needless Large Rod is actually part of this uh, Ceres, but looks like a fight's breaking out. Sawyer. Is going to just be CC'd until he dies. The slam comes out. He's able to just about survive this as Kalem doing a lot of damage to Baloo. And Baloo's just going to lose his life. It's just uh, so hard. I mean, M Test just doesn't have the range to auto anyone. And he's like their only damage. I mean, Zombie's got a bit, but he isn't exactly able to get in close. And. You know, even compositionally, we could talk about how difficult it is, but this is an 11k gold lead. Oh, but Kamara caught out potentially. Yeah, they might have found him here. He goes to the stopwatch. He doesn't have the revive. So if he dies here, that is him actually going down and spoiling that wonderful KDA. It looks like he is able to survive. Is Kalim with the Baron going to be able to take this mid lane turret with the help of the rest of his team? Dusty a little bit low. I don't really think they can actually approach here.
Oh, good lockdown. Actually, Woolsey has to flash. Just about able to survive. Inhibitor in the mid lane will finally fall down. It looks like Resolve are taking their foot off the gas a little bit here. Can Dusty defend is the question because this Baron is still on Resolve right now. They're I still feeling pretty comfortable. Just reset here. You don't need a fight here. Just reset and spend your gold. So let's try to run them down. They've actually popped the on the hunt. It's an ulti burnt. There's the true shot barrage. Just, ooh, that's a fair amount of damage to M-Test. And let's have resolved not willing to expend this gold. They don't want to give up on the siege. They want to use this Baron to its fullest extent. A chill is doing some significant damage. Zombie chunked out and... It should just be Resolve able to take this tower here. They find a hook on to Kalim, but Kalim just turns it straight back around and oh, Blue is put the tower's turned off by stuff. It's a double kill for him. He has had a flawless game on the Volley Bear right now. Resolve say to hell with spending gold. We want to close this game out. We want to find our first win here. It has been a rough start to them in the NLC. It's Chimera's KDA oh is finally my. tarnished what by an Zombie. Inter. Kalim is going to jump in and Zombie will be returning to the grave as Resolve. 25 minutes onto the clock. We'll be able to close this game out. Make it 24 and a half. We're not going to round up. Resolve, tight the win. 16 kills to one. Kamara, kind of letting the team down there, mate. Yeah, I mean, honestly, pretty poor performance from Kamara given over that kill at the end. But regardless, a very clean and controlled game. I think they made the right decisions. I think the composition honestly did, did numbers for them. Um, the fact that the Anivia was just fitting so well and they have like the only Anivia player in the NLC was great. But uh, Soft on the Volley Bear as well, just such a driving force yeah. to set up those plays. And this was a much needed win because you may have seen for the predictions, this was heavily favored towards Resolve. Um, and Resolve had been this team who have just looked so good until it comes to actually winning games. And then yeah. they've really struggled. So this was a very needed one on the board. Oh, it was it was like Jamada said uh, in, in the pre-game. He said it, it felt a little bit like Resolve had kind of got lost in the mid-game in their previous games. This yeah. time, not been the case. A fantastic win there for Resolve. But we're going to let our analyst desk break this down a little bit more. But before that, it's time for a quick break. So we'll be back after this with 